Welcome to this introductory session on large group teaching learning strategies. Most of our classrooms in India have large numbers and large numbers automatically mean a large number of problems. The teacher is always faced with this question, how do I handle these large numbers? In fact, in some of the scenarios that you just saw, you might have recognized some of these problems associated with large groups. But there's no need to fear. We have some strategies for you to help you handle large numbers. Let us learn some of these strategies in this session. Let us look at some characteristics of large classrooms. For one thing, the strength of large classrooms could be anything between 20 to 50 or maybe even more. The second characteristic of large classrooms is their heterogeneous nature. We find heterogeneity in terms of students' ability, their interests, their learning styles, the background knowledge which they have come to class and their socio-economic background. Now imagine a class where there is no interactivity and it is just the teacher talking to the student. Such classes are likely to be monotonous and students are going to be very passive. Therefore, it is necessary to make our classrooms very interactive. When the whole class is involved in an activity, there are various possibilities. The first possibility is where the teacher is active and the students are paying attention. But that would mean very limited interactivity on part of the students. The second case could be where the class is interactive, like let's say the class is reciting a poem or the class is carrying on some small activity. This of course is more interactive than the previous case. And we have the third case where the class could be involved in some kind of dramatization or a role play or a small group discussion. So you see, the class is more interactive in the third case than it was in the first and the second cases. We have seen three cases of varying interactivity. And now let us look at some different strategies to large group learning. Here are three approaches to large group learning. Direct instruction, indirect instruction and interactive strategies. Let us look at the direct instructions approach. This is quite a teacher centric approach. The teacher delivers a lecture. This can commonly be used to elaborate some concept, to talk about some event or maybe it can even be used to teach how to perform a skill step by step. And now let us look at method for indirect instructions. These will include alternatives like inquiry, induction, problem solving, decision making or discovery. For example, let us say there is a class of B.Ed students and they are wondering how to solve the problem of indiscipline in class. The alternative being used there is that of problem solving combined with decision making. Now this would involve some amount of indirect instructions where the teacher is not totally involved. Students are greatly involved. How? They are greatly involved by observing what's happening. They are investigating into the matter. The students draw inferences based on their discussions and based on these inferences they would come up with some kind of a hypothesis which then is useful in problem solving. When a student is involved in indirect instructions it has a number of advantages. One, the student is totally involved. Two, the student discusses with his or her peers and thus comes up with some novel solutions to a given problem. All this fosters critical thinking, independent thinking and of course decision making which are important skills that we want developed in our students. Let us now see 
how interactive strategies are beneficial to students in large classrooms. First of all, this is a very student oriented approach. Because of the interactivity, the students are wholly involved and it is their learning that takes the pivotal position. Students can also share their views, their opinions with one another and this builds up confidence. It helps them to learn in a collaborative atmosphere. Yet another important aspect of interactive strategies is that they develop tolerance and empathy for one another's views. And this is something very, very vital in our country. When students listen to one another, they learn to listen patiently, they learn to respect the other person's views and perhaps they get a different perspective of the topic that is being investigated. Due to this kind of an interaction and due to this kind of interactive discussions, something new could be created. For example, we are a group of students talking on, let us say, how to conserve water. Student A comes from a rural background and he or she has a different perspective. Student B is from an urban background and therefore his or her perspective would differ very much from that of student A. Now by exchanging their views and thoughts, they could come up with a hybrid solution, a solution that would be useful in their given situation. This is the advantage of using interactive strategies. Yet another special aspect of interactive strategies is that the teacher is just a guide by the side and not the sage on the stage. So the teacher just plays the role of a facilitator. He or she facilitates the discussion, but it is the students who really control the discussion. The teacher's role cannot be just being a guide by the side. The teacher should not be just passive. The teacher has to monitor the discussion. And if need be, the teacher intervenes and brings the discussion to a fruitful closure. So far, we have looked at the nature and the special features of large group learning. We have also looked at some of these aspects when we looked at our scenarios. Large group learning has two sets of problems. One, problems faced by the learner and two, problems faced by the teachers. Let us look at some of the obstacles that students face when they are part of large group classrooms. Very often students have to sit passively and that could mean sitting for anything between 45 minutes to maybe even 2 hours. Another obstacle that students face is sitting through monotonous lectures. Monotony dulls the mind and it gets the person into a very passive mood. Students also face another problem. How do I sustain my attention through this long, continuous period of a lecture? Large group classrooms means a large number of students. So the student might harbor certain doubts in his mind, but he or she is hesitant to voice these doubts aloud. Questions that come into the learner's mind are, if I ask this question, is this a foolish question? Or he might or she might wonder, am I the only one facing this doubt? No one else is asking questions. How do I ask this question? Yet another problem that we face is that the teacher is often thinking of completing a certain amount of portion within that stipulated time. And therefore, the teacher may not encourage doubts in a very large setup. Students also are hesitant to share their views. They often have questions about themselves. Well, this is my view, but what if my classmates do not accept it? And because of these kind of hindrances that are in their mind, they are hesitant to speak aloud in a large classroom. While teaching large classrooms, teachers have their own set of problems. And to help you understand the problems faced by teachers, we have four little scenarios for you. Let's look at the first scenario. 
Here is Miss Mali. She is a mathematics teacher in Modern English High School, Bandra, Mumbai. Now let's look at the problem faced by her when she teaches her class of 50 students. She faces two major issues. She wishes to make her session interactive. But how to bring that interactivity into the session is a big question. Secondly, she feels students should share their ideas and knowledge with each other. They should benefit due to peer-to-peer -peer interactivity. So Miss Mali is searching for a way to introduce interactivity among her students. Let's go to the second case. Mr. Ravasti from Balak Vidyalai Varanasi. His problem is he has 70 students in his class at a time. Mr. Avasti wants to use technology in his classroom, but he is not sure about what ways he can use to make his students learn through the use of technology. Here is the third case. Mr. DeMello is a lecturer in TL Institute of Education, Delhi. He too faces some problems because of the large number of students in his class. You must have observed that he is worried about classroom management. Teachers in all these three scenarios face various problems. Problems regarding introducing interactivity, using technology, managing large number of students in their classrooms. Now, let's look at one more example. Miss Nair is a lecturer of English Literature at K.S. Somani College of Science, Commerce and Arts, Coimbatore. She has more than 100 students in her class and she is not clear if the evaluation strategies that she knows are adequate enough for evaluating large classrooms. Thus, teachers face different problems in large classrooms. That is, problems regarding introducing interactivity, using technology, problems associated with classroom management and evaluation of students throughout the lecture. A project undertaken by the Teaching and Educational Development Institute University of Queensland, Australia suggests that the quality of teaching and assessment provided are more important than the class size. And so that brings us to an imperative question. How can the quality of teaching and assessment be enhanced so as to make large group teaching effective? In a large country like India, where a number of students pursue higher education, large group strategies are absolutely necessary. We will be looking at some of these strategies and techniques in detail in our next session.